the year was about 1940. I was about 12 years old and getting old enough to start noticing things like who voted for what and who was running and what party was this and what party was that. And my dad was a staunch Democrat. He wouldn't even think of voting for anybody with a Republican in front of their name. And uh, one day I asked him, I said, Dad, what's the difference in the Democrat and Republican? He says, oh, Republicans are for rich people and Democrats are for poor people. And we're poor, so we're bound to be a Democrat. Okay, that satisfied my, my question for the period, but... Uh, Oh, a couple, three weeks went by, and one day he says, You know what? I just got to thinking about what you asked me. And if Democrats are for poor people, they're going to keep as many people poor as possible. And with the Depression, it looks like that's exactly what they were doing. They did dole out a few, money, a few dollars in the way of these make-work jobs like WPA and PWA and I don't know what they all, there were several things that they did, but they just paid enough to eat and sleep on. And uh, the people, it kept them away from jobs that would make them money. But that comes to my story about life, money and life. These two men were walking down this long, lonely road of life. And they were both broke. They were both hungry. They couldn't see the end of the road where it was going, so they didn't know how their lives were going to turn out. And they looked down and there laid two $20 bills on the ground. Each one picked one up. The next day they met and one says, well, what'd you do with your $20 bill? And he says, I bought a fancy wallet. It says that is an alligator skin wallet. It has room for 10 credit cards in it. It's got a hidden compartment for big bills. And he said, they let me have it for $20. What did you buy? And he said, well, I bought a hamburger. And he pulled it out and showed it to him. And the fellow bought the wallet said, well, I'm hungry too. Did you get one for me? And he said, no. He said, I figured you had $20. You could buy your own hamburger. And he said, well, that's not very nice. You, you've got $20 and I don't have any now. And, I, and you should give me part of yours. And he said, well, I'm sorry, but the, I bought me a hamburger and I'm going to eat it. And, I won't be hungry anymore. So he ate his hamburger and they walked on down the road. Roll forward 20 years and guess which one was the most successful and one which one is still hungry and squandering his money. You know, I've mentioned before, I worked for Sears 21 years. I had what they classed as a mid-management job or level and any promotions I've gotten over the last two or three years had never been real promotions that just moved sideways from one job to another and they were using me to clean up messes somebody else had made in the department and uh, one day they called me in and said uh, or they called me down to the manager's office and I got there when I stepped inside, there was three new suits there that I'd never seen before, and I said, thought to myself, this ain't going to end well. Well, they sat down and they talked, and they said, well, Sears is going through a restructuring of its corporate purpose. Uh, that's a fancy way of saying we're going to lay off some people. Uh, and your job, which was managing the installed home to improvement department products, no matter what we sold, we offered installation. And it was done by uh, uh, contract installers, plumbers, electricians, 
cabinet makers, carpet layers, whatever. And I was in charge of all those jobs. And they said, that job is ending because we're going to stop installing our home improvement products. But the good news is uh, your job is now going to be in Chicago as a sporting goods buyer. And I said, well, there's three things that I'd never do in life, and all three of them have moved to Chicago. And they said, well, in a case like that, uh, your job is ending, so uh, you're eligible. You got uh, 71 points, 21 years service, 50 years of age, and uh, so we can offer you some separation benefits. And uh, they made several offers, and one of them uh, was one that would provide me with some income for the next 15 years till I was eligible for Social Security and it continued my hospital insurance and my life insurance. But I couldn't do go to work for or open any business that was in any way in competition to Sears. So I took that and technically speaking I became an airport bum. And I want to show you my wallet. Here it is. It has no, it has one pocket for a credit card. And that's it right there. In fact, it's not even a credit card. My pilot, my insurance card, my pilot's license, and my social security card. and a picture of my pride and joy. Now, the reason I carry this around is kind of a joke. People are always wanting to see a picture of my pride and joy and I show them that. And I am kind of proud of it because I won a photo contest with that one time. It used to be a contest called the Kodak International Newspaper Snapshot Awards and it was a weekly contest and I happened to be teaching photography in a community college so I assigned my students each week to shoot a photo that complied with that and entered in the newspaper contest and I decided to shoot one myself and the, uh, that week the title was Your Pride and Joy so I set this up, shot it, mailed it in, and I won the weekly contest there. Of course, when it got to International, I guess they didn't have, an, have a sense of humor, so it didn't even get a horrible mention there. But that's my wallet. I have no credit cards, haven't had a credit card in years, because if you can't afford to buy something, you can't afford to buy it on credit because all it does on credit, it isn't cheaper, even though they say we give you back 1% rebate on everything you buy, you turn around and pay it back the first month you have it in interest. And speaking of Sears, did you know that the first credit card ever issued was issued by Sears Roebuck in 1892, and it was called the Sears Revolving Charge, SRC. All of us employees referred to it as a surgery revolting card. Uh, it was issued to you with the thought it would never be paid off. You'd always be adding on to one end of it and paying off the other end. And it became the most profitable part of Sears Corporation business was their credit card. They made more money with absolutely no investment in product that might go up sale. All they were doing was investing profit that they'd already made to support the card and all the profit, all the payments from it went back into the car, uh, corporate funds. And uh, speaking of that, I want to tell you the three things you should never do in life if you expect to have any form of your money left for what you need. Number one, never 
obligate yourself for somebody else's debt. Never sign a co-signer on a loan of any kind because nine out of ten times you'll have to pay it off. If they can't afford to get the loan on their own uh, history, you certainly don't want to loan them money. Second is never do anything that gets you involved with the police and, and lawyers. Uh, that's anything down from uh, speeding or getting drunk especially or anything like that. Just avoid anything that would ever get a policeman involved in your life because it's going to cost you. Did you know that the average first DUI in Texas will cost you $10,000 before it's over? Uh, that's lawyer fees and probation fees and fines and the courts anymore are geared to extract money from people who do dumb things. And the third one is never take out a credit card. My wife was shopping down at Kohl's and they said, uh, let us have your Kohl's card and I can give you 20% off on this purchase here. And I don't know how much it was, whatever. She bought some dresses or blouses or something. She said, well, I don't have a Kohl's card. They said, well, we can make out an application for one and still give you the 20%. So she made out the application for it. And... Uh, about a week later, we got a letter from Coles and said, we're sorry to inform you, we can't issue a Coles credit card. And anybody that can't get a Coles card <laughs> is pretty, pretty bad. But anyway, they gave the reasons. We cannot verify your income. Good. We cannot verify any debt record. Good. And we cannot verify your assets, which is great. If you'll hide your assets where they aren't readily visible to anybody who wants to check them you're better off it's better off if you know how much you have available but nobody else does because if if you have enough available there's going to be people trying to get it from you but those those are the rules to live by on uh, if you want to make a success of your life and it's the cowboy attitude which uh, you use what you have you make do with what you have you don't waste anything and you work at it continue, uh, at whatever you're doing as I said I was fired from Sears when I was 50 years old best thing that ever happened to me it forced me to quit looking at somebody else to pay my pay me for what I do and I started doing it on my own first as I say I became an airport bum I hung around a glider port and uh, I worked there as they needed if they needed somebody as a flight instructor I was available if they needed a tow pilot I was available and quite often they would have some visitor or newsman or reporter or something there that they wanted to interview and they wanted somebody to entertain them and they'd get me to do it. And uh, they paid me a reasonable amount for that. But uh, I also started delivering airplanes. I could fly just about anything without a jet engine on it. Uh, and that included some of the older antique airplanes and things like that and if somebody sold or bought one and it was somewhere quite a ways from where they wanted it they wanted somebody dependable to fly it there for them and I had uh, developed a reputation of being a, a competent tail wheel pilot which is much more difficult than flying an airplane with a nose wheel and uh, I got all expenses and a, and a daily rate, which is fairly uh, substantial. Uh, and uh, I also started writing news uh, magazine articles, freelancing those, and uh, freelancing photos. Uh, I shot photos for magazine covers, and, but we had a lot of visitors that came there to Black Forest, and I would take a picture of them and 
sell them a uh, eight by ten, or some of them even wanted a sixteen by twenty wall print mounted size, and I got two hundred and fifty dollars for those big prints. But all of those put together, I wound up making more money than I ever had for Sears and keeping more of it. I no longer wore expensive suits and ties and all that. And this is a picture of me how I looked about a year after I moved to Colorado. I was the happiest guy that you ever saw. When I moved there, I had, uh, I was a pre-diabetic. I weighed 250 pounds. By the time I built a house and everything, I was down to 200. And never felt better in my life, and I never had a physical ailment for the 40 years since then. I'm 90 years old. I don't have a thing in the world uh, that's threatening me now. I take only minimal medications for one for a little uh, high blood pressure and one for uh, cholesterol and that's it. But just wanted you to know my life and my attitudes and uh, that I'm the happiest guy that you ever saw. I, I make YouTubes now for for fun. It's something that I enjoy doing and it does pay a few dollars. Everything that I do or like that I think about is it going to make me money or cost me money? And I don't do things that cost me money. So you folks, God bless America, God bless Texas, and you folks have a great day.